Okay, Shalom, Shalom. Kwame Yashe Allah. Koholo Yimla Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechaha Kodash. Double honor to our apostles and elders. A great millstone who rule well. And that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say Thawada to all you Aki and Akwab. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Jachanan Awaf just coming at you with another quick lesson praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. Right? So, this is a TikTok video. And, uh, um, you know, I want to just put a copyright disclaimer out there real quick that this is for educational purposes only. I'm not making any monetary value off of it. I'm just using it for the purpose of education. So, and I guess this was like an experiment. But it says, um, they managed to convince an uh, entire population that they're, some, that they're somehow guilty and should be ashamed of their skin color. Racism against white people is the only kind of discrimination that that's allowed. Okay, so now they're they're screaming and hollering, you know, victim basically, you know, and we, you know, let's touch on this 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 skin color thing too because colors are not nationalities, colors are not ethnicities, you know, and the so-called white man, see, he's guilty of so much shit. He's even guilty of the fact that you've made up social constructs that don't even exist. That's got the entire fucking planet confused. That's just one thing. We ain't gonna even talk about the millions of other things that they've done to confuse the entire planet. You know? They've, they've given you a white God. They've given you white Jesus. They've given you white angels, white disciples, white prophets, white Mary, Esther, you name it. You see? So so they're, 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 they're guilty of so many things. You know, there's so many things I could touch on in this particular lesson, but I want to touch on the fact that they're talking about, well, I'm going to play the video. Let's play the video. And like I said, it, it's it's plenty of, you can get a, a, maybe 10 lessons out of this thing. <laughs> Just within this couple of minutes of what they're saying, basically, right? Because there's no such thing as white people. They're pinkish to reddish in color. There's no such thing as black people. They're different shades of brown people. Now, it's interesting that in this particular video, what you're going to see is they're going to be talking about black and white. Why wouldn't they be talking about white and Asian, white and Chinese, white and Japanese, white and Cambodians, you know, white and damn Filipinos, white and, you know, why, why is their subject always white and black? There's a reason for that, because it's scriptural. But let's play the video. And they've been oppressed that a lot of their culture was stolen from them. Like and a lot of the reasons yeah. that I don't like proud to be white is because yeah, it yeah. has. Let me take it back. Ah, oh, man. Damn. Damn it. I want to take it back to basically the beginning. Let's start it from here. So you're so saying I, I can't uh, be proud to be white because I don't have a culture. No, I. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. I, that I, when white people say they're proud to be white, a lot of times. At least in my opinion, they're just they're talking about their skin color, that they're not a different race. I think that's wrong. Yeah. But um, as like we were talking about as a proud black person, they've been oppressed that a lot of their culture was stolen from them. And a lot of the reasons that I don't like proud to be white is because it has the, the Nazis used it. The, the, the KKK used it. I don't want to be associated with any of those things. So I'm just going to completely stay away from that. Sure, I'm not proud of like what my culture has done. But at the same time, like I would not want to be anything else. If I had to choose another race, I don't know what I would be. I'm okay with where I am, even though I'm getting... See, you can see that complete pride in this one. Because she, matter of fact, I want to play it all because I couldn't get it to come back. So we'll just play it again. But because it kind of started in the center. And really, it was, a, it was a conversation between the guy that you've seen talking and basically a conversation between her. Because let's just play it. Since it's at the end, it's just going to play back over. I was trying to push it back to the point of but I couldn't do it. So let's just play it again. Being white. I am proud to be white. I don't know what you're doing. I don't hate you guys. I, don't, I almost went there too. It's like I think so like hard. guiltily, like I'm like. So let me pause it there. So as you you know, they was questioned about being white, right? You know, step to the you know you got to choose a side. You had the whole group of them. That's basically you know what I'm saying. They're ashamed of so called being white. You had that one lady that she moved to the right. She's proud to be white, right? So let's play it. Happy that I'm not oppressed 
but I'm not proud of like things people have done in the past. When I uh, the people have done in the past, no, your people have done in the past. See, they they never want to admit to what their people done in the past. Who are you talking about? What people done in the past? No, your people done that in the past. Edomites done that in the past. That's the biblical name for the so-called white man, Esau, Edom. You see, there's no such thing as white people because she's not white. That is a social construct that the, the so-called white man came up in 1681. And I was just watching um, um the elder Malcolm from out there in Chicago. You know, he's the historian on this thing, man. He goes in, you know, you, you know, and the water for our teachers, man, that, that have taught us well and how to research and things of that nature. See, th this the so-called white man's whole thing is falling apart and they don't even want to be so-called white no more. See, there was a time when they was proud as fuck to be white. They was proud as fuck of their country. Now you got with the, you know, they're, they're so they're, they're so-called woke. You know, they will admit to some things, but they still have this. You know, this I, I, I really didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. You see what I'm saying? Type of attitude. As a matter of fact, let me get, grab that real quick. Let's go. Let's grab a quick scripture real fast. Like I said, we're just going to pick this video apart just a little bit. You know, I'm going to kind of come out of it, go into some scripture and, um, you know, because it's not that long of a video. But it's interesting to hear about, you know, to hear what some of them have to say coming out of their own mouths. This is Isaiah 14. In verse um, 21, it says, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. See, she, she's sitting there talking about like how some people done back. I, I'm not with what some people done in the past. No, it's your people. You know, she's trying to slither her way around. And that's what the damn serpent does too. the damn devil, man. They're fucking deceivers. That's what that word devil goes off into um, being a deceiver, man. A slanderer, you know, that's what they do. It says prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. They don't have no business out here. We don't need no more cities from you so-called white people. These cities are horrible. They ran horribly. They, they you know, it, 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 it's just a concrete fucking jungle. You know? And only a few of your people are, 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 are living it up in it. Your whole world, your whole system is whack as hell. <laughs> you know, the world needs new management. We need another rate. Hell, let the damn Chinese run it. Hell, if that's the case. Here you go. You running the world and everything is fucked all up, man. Anyway, let's go back to the video. When I think of being proud of something, I think of something I worked for or that um, I, yeah, I, had to get, I, I had to do nothing to be white. Absolutely nothing. And nothing was taken from me because I was white. It's like saying I'm a proud white person is a completely different saying than saying I'm a proud black person. Because when you hear I'm a proud black person, I think empowerment, I think strength, I think courage, I think, you know, all these amazing things that the black community has done and accomplished throughout the years. But then when you. OK, so now you notice that out of all the people that she could have mentioned. She had to mention so-called black people, right? And you so-called blacks, you're, you're Hebrew Israelites. That's your biblical nationality. You so-called whites, you are Esau. You're Edomites, Idumians. That's your biblical nationality. And it's not looking good for you as far as in the scriptures, man. You're in the things that you've done. Because, see, you've had your time to reign. This is your time. And you know that you're falling when you're having conversations like this. When you're grouped up in a spot. And you're separated on each other. And matter of fact, you know what? Because <clears throat> they are divided. You do have more of the ones that's basically on the on the side of, you know, saying, OK, I'm not proud of basically what my people done, so to speak, you know. But it's actually division. And let's get that real quick. This is how we know that, uh, you know, their kingdom is falling straight out of Yahweh's mouth, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. That's how we know that it's all is all falling. It's all just going to shits on them. And Yahweh shot um, 12 and 25, Matthew 12 and 25. And Yahweh shot knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself, it shall not stand. 
And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? See, they should be all proud to be white and should be doing what so-called white people do, conquering with their sword. But now you have this group of them that's like, I, I don't want nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with that. I don't want nothing, you know, I, you know, some people in the past know it's your people in the past done those things. You see, so it's a separation and it's throughout all the world. There, see, Russians shouldn't be fighting against Ukraine, um, Ukrainians because they're the same people. They're all Edomites. Russia shouldn't have no beef with the U.S. They should be all getting together and, and, and saying, hey, we got to keep these Israelites down. Let's keep these niggas down. You know, why aren't they coming together as, a, as nations of people? All them NATO nations, all those so-called white nations, they should be all in one league saying, hey, we have a common um, goal. Keep the Israelites down. But why? But, but what's going on with them? They're all fighting. It's all infighting. It's, it's infighting with the NATO. You know? Anyway, let's get some more. When you say I am a strong or I'm a proud white person, already there's so much like hate yeah. involved in that. The thing about that is like like how you said someone who says I'm proud to be black, that's empowerment. Why aren't I allowed to be proud to be white? What makes it wrong? You haven't been oppressed. Yeah, what are you proud of? Just your skin color? Because yes, that is wrong. So you're so saying I, I can't be proud to be white because I don't have a culture. No, I <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I, that I, when white people say they're proud to be white, a lot of times, at least in my opinion, they're just they're talking about their skin color, that they're not a different race. I think that's wrong. Yeah. But um, as like we were talking about, as a proud black person, they've been oppressed, that a lot of their culture was stolen from them. And a lot of the reasons that I don't like proud to be white is because it has... The, the Nazis used it. The, the, the KKK used it. I don't want to be associated with any of those things. So I'm just... See? Why not, though? That's your culture. He doesn't want it to be associated, even though, you know, the things that he said, OK, he's he's being, you know, all right. Somewhat genuine, you know what I'm saying? But still, at the same time, that's not going to save you from what's coming to you as a people. You see. Because, you know, the, the, the apostles bring it out all the time. You know, there wasn't all um, all the Israelites wasn't disobedient or, or, or all of them bad, so to speak. But we went into captivity as a whole entire nation. You know, when you had the prophets, you had Daniel in them, you know, in situations like that. When they went in, those were, you know, men that kept the, the law, statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They honored Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They, you know, they, they, you know, woke up and meditated on the Lord on a day to day basis. You know what I'm saying? But they went into captivity with the rest of the nation. So that's what's going to happen to the so-called white man. But I just found it interesting in this video that. Why are they talking about so-called black and why are they talking about so-called white? But let, let's get it. Let's 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 show why. Because this has been a struggle for a real long time between this is a battle between Esau and, and Jacob, the twins, man. Let me see here. Uh, OK, let me just start at verse 21. Genesis 25 and 20 point, 21. Let's get a little history on Isaac and, um, you know. And Rebecca, right now, Rebecca, she couldn't conceive. So Isaac went before the Lord and prayed, you know, so then this is a seed line thing. You know, this is the promise that's going from Abraham to Isaac and then to Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Those are the, the children of Israel. You know what I'm saying? And you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, you come from one of those tribes. You are Israelites. And, 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 and the world hates you. When you go into Psalms chapter 83, it gives you a whole list of, of, well, you know, not the entire, entire list, but it's all nations. But the main nations, Chinese, uh, so-called white people, uh, the Arabs. Uh, the so-called Japanese people, um, the damn Africans, all these people, they hate you. And it's clear in that chapter. They hate the Lord. They're enemies of the Lord. And of course, they're enemies of the children of Israel. So all these nations have come together as a um, confederation, so to speak, to keep you Jake down, to keep you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans down. That's how you know that their kingdom is falling because of the separation now that they have. There is too much infighting. Now the Lord is starting to have them fight against each other and cause discord among them, like how they cause discord among us. So somewhat the curses are being reversed on them now. They're coming up against each other now. 
they're fighting against each other now. Instead of saying, hey, well, you know, the common goal was keep the Israelites down. Let's continue to rule over them. But they can't anyway because that's not the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is playing out. See, they can't just, you know, stop the movie, put in a whole nother character and, 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 and you know, um, add another prop over here and say, you know, yeah, we, we should have had him wearing this color instead of that color. No, the movie is playing. It's going to play to the end. Everybody already have their positions. Everybody have their lot. And, and there's nothing you can change in this movie. So it, with, in this point in the movie, the enemy is falling. And then there's going to come a climax, so to speak, or, you know, in a, in a movie where you get that the enemy and the, um, the good guy and the bad guy are going to clash. The, the, the bad guy is still going to be whooping some ass, but it's going to come a point where, you know, eventually the good guy is going to win. And that's the thing with um, Esau and Jacob. That's what this movie is all about. The movie is about the so-called blacks and the so-called whites right now. It's always been that way. The children of Israel against the children of Esau. That's the, this is the movie. Well, let's get it right here. Genesis 25 and 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and Yahweh was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So she got pregnant. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So if you notice, it says children. Because she has twins in her womb. It, it actually says that over in the um, NLT. Let's get the NLT real quick. Verse 21. Isaac pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was unable to have children. The Lord answered Isaac's prayer and Rebecca became pregnant with twins. Right. But the two children struggled with each other in her womb. So she went to ask the Lord about it. Why is this happening to me? She asked. So these children were always struggling from the womb. This been going on for thousands of years. It's going to go out. It, it's go, it started with the It started with Cain and Abel, basically. You know, you, if you have ears to hear, that's another lesson, though. But it goes off into the reincarnation, basically, of Cain and Abel, so to speak. But, it, it, you know, but the thing, the story is about... Esau and Jacob, these twins right here, right? It says, and the Lord told her, told her, the sons in your womb will become two nations. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. See that? One nation will be stronger than the other. And your older son will serve your younger son. And that's what's going to happen in the future. That prophecy has to come to pass. Because they're in rulership right now. They have the fatness of the earth. This is what they was blessed with, the fatness of the earth and the sword. That's the reason why they're so good at making weapons. That's the reason why, you know, they're, you know, they have all the whole entire globe, you know, basically pretty much bow to, you know, bowing to them, so to speak, because that was a, um, a blessing that was given to them, which we can get that to. Verse 24, it says, uh, and when the time came to give birth, Rebecca discovered that she did indeed have twins. The first was the first one was very red at birth. Who's the red person? Esau. Edom, the so-called white man that's calling himself white. He no one looks like a goddamn glass of milk, man. You might see an albino or something like that, you know what I'm saying? That kind of looks a little, you know, whitey, so to speak. But we're talking about as a race of people, those people, you pay attention to them when this cold weather is going down. They laughing. Or they, you know, they're you know, they're running, they're jogging. You see them out here jogging, they be red as hell. You're looking like brake lights on a damn ambulance, man. Looking like a damn stop sign. So where's this white come in at? They came up with that. As if they're pure or something, you know? And then, the, the, you know, the apostles always get the illustration of, you know, look up the word white and you look up the word black in the dictionary. Black has all kinds of um, negative shit to it. Black male, black ball, black swan, black sheep. You know, murderous, dirty, you know, without light, void, you know. And then when it comes to white, it's all pure light, whiteness, you know, of, uh, 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 you know, it, it has everything to do with life, living. You see? So those are social constructs, man. Colors are not ethnicities, man. We have to explain that all the time. Anyway, verse 26. No, no. Verse 25 again. Salakia. And I'm still reading the NLT, the New Living Translation. <laughs> The first one was very red at birth and covered with thick hair like a fur coat. 
So they named him Esau, right? Then they have another name. It says Hebrew term that means hair. Okay. Now that shit means red or, or no, um, Edom. He, you know, they, they, he was given another name as well. Let's continue. Verse 26. Then the, the other twin was born with his hand grasping Esau's heel because they were scrapping in the womb, man. He grabbed him by the heel, like basically get your ass back in here. <laughs> so they named him Jacob. Heel. You know, and, and it goes off into su supplanter. They have um deceiver here. But anyway, it says Isaac was 60 years old when the, when the twins were born. Now here you go right here. You have Esau selling his birthright. This is what is really all over. Esau sold his birthright and we got the blessing. So this is what this whole entire fight is over. Over A lot of so-called white people, they don't know why they actually hate you, but it's naturally within them to hate you. Because it talks about being rivals, right? It's like you. I'm trying to see him out here. I'm trying to look around. Anyway, it says as the boys grew, Grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter. Who's the skillful hunter, man? This is how you know who he is. This man will sit out and, and uh, uh, set bear traps, motherfucker, kill lions, kill elephants, kill rhinoceros. He, this guy hunts for sport. He'll sit out in the woods in the cold and, and, and for weeks at a time, man, just trying to kill one animal. We're not doing no shit like that. It says, as the boys grew, Esau became a skillful hunter. He was an outdoorsman. Who's the outdoorsman? I love the NLT, man. The NLT, it goes off sometimes, but the NLT, it gives you a pretty plain scenario, man. Of what, who's what, what's what, and who's who, man. But Jacob had a quiet temperament, preferring to stay at home. That's us. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. It's not like we won't go out and hunt. We're going out to hunt for food, and then we coming back to the crib. We, we don't see it as a sport, man. The so-called white man, this man, he's got motherfucking heads all on the wall. He's got a he's got a goddamn bear rug, a leopard rug, a lion rug, some shit. You know, he's always somewhere on a on a damn hunting trip. He done came up with hunting licenses, man. It's, it's so-called white people out here hunting right now. I don't know what season it is for whatever, but hell, everything is in season for this man. He's a damn killer. And this is why, you know, when you look at that video. They don't want to be, you know, they're not proud of their, 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 you know, their history, man. It says, as the boys grew, Esau became a skillful hunter. He was an outdoorsman, but Jacob had a quiet temperament, preferring to stay at home. See, that's all we want to do. We got our wine. We got our drinks, tequila, beer, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, some music, some good food going. And we, we prefer to chill at the, at the crib. See, it's nothing for us to sit at the house and watch the NFL game. You know, grill going. They got to go. They, they need to be there. They dead in the stadium. You know what I'm saying? Showing their damn wildness. You know, they had to go to those gladi gladi gladiator type um, settings, man. They love that shit. It says Isaac loved Esau because he, he enjoyed eating the wild game Esau brought home. But Rebecca loved Jacob. OK, so. Let's go to. Um, chapter 27 with the blessing, right? Because like I said, again, this is what this is all over. It says the stolen blessing, which the blessing wasn't stolen. It was, you know, it was, it, you know, Esau had gave it up. I mean, you know, it, it was all by um, prophecy anyway. Right. So if you're familiar with the story, I don't want to read it all, you know, for the sake of the um, time on the lesson. But, um, you know, you read through it. Basically, Rebecca overheard Isaac telling Esau to go and hunt. Get him some of his favorite venison, his favorite food or whatever to cook. He's going to bless him because Isaac is about to pass away. He's getting old. His eyes are dim. He's, you know, becoming blind. He's older. He's getting ready to pass away. So he's going to bless Isaac with because Isaac was the oldest son. Right. So Rebecca, she overheard it and told Jacob to basically go in, you know, and, you know, and basically act as if he was Esau. I mean, yep. Act as if he was Esau and get the blessing. Right. Because she understood it, you know. But anyway, let's get verse. Let's start at verse uh, 37. Oh, let me see. Well, I got to get a little bit more. Let's start at verse 36. Esau exclaimed, no wonder his name is Jacob, for now he has cheated me twice. First, I'm, I'm reading in the NLT as well. 
New Living Translation. First, he took my rights as, as a firstborn. No, you gave up the rights as a firstborn, right? See, that's Esau again. He doesn't want to admit. See, that's just like the lady, you know, that's something that they do. They don't, you know, accountability, you know, they, they don't have it like that. They, they don't want to be accountable for the shit that they've done. See, he, 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 he literally gave away the birthright himself, but he's saying that, you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, Jacob took it from him or stole it from him. You can't steal a birthright. He, he, he gave it away. He sold it, you know, for some raw meat and shit. And I should have read on a little bit further in that chapter, verse 25. And that's how it goes off into how he got his name Edom, which means red. They like red steaks. They don't want their steaks all, you know, well done. They like raw shit. They just want to sear it. And that's pretty much, see, when you go off into that, he's impatient. The fool wasn't ready. He could have easily just waited. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like he was just going to die like he said he was. Um, I'm, 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 I'm at the point of death. No, nigga, just wait on the food to get done. You know, he won't. And no, that, that's where you get your microwave mentality from. You know, he's the he's the king of the drive through. You see these people in America, man, they, they, they go through a drive through. They're not getting their shit within 30 seconds. They, they pitch a damn fit like a damn three year old. See, he, he, he's an impatient man that runs an impatient society. That's why you see people bugging the fuck out out here. Anyway. Jacob. Let me see. It says uh, Esau exclaimed, no wonder his name is Jacob, for now he has cheated me twice. First, he took my, my rights as a firstborn and now he has stolen my blessing. Oh, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master. And this is what's coming in the future. We're, we're masters. We're going to be masters over them. I have made Jacob your master and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is left for me to give you, my son? And that's going off into the you know spirit, you know, because the Lord, he, you know, in the kingdom, the new kingdom that's to come. Oh, it's going to be ooh, beautiful. See, like how we're on the bottom right now as a people, we're going to be on top. And Esau is going to have to pay for all the shit that he has ever done to us as a people. You see? It says, finally, his father, Isaac, said to him, you will live away from the you will live away from the richest richness of the earth and away from the dew of the heaven above. Let me get that in the KJV. It says, and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above. That's the reason why they they have the best of the lands. They live in the best, most pristine places. You know, they're kind of like off a lake somewhere. You know, they have the best of water. They have the best of the, you know, air quality. They're not, you know, even though they live in cities and shit like that. But, you know, when it comes straight down to the elite of them or the ones, you know, that really have some, some money, so to speak, you know, they have the best of places, man. And you... As a so-called black person, you can have that same amount of money and, and, and they won't allow you there. You can have more money than them, than them and they won't allow you there. No, this is, you know, <laughs> you know, you get it. Anyway, it says, and by the sword shalt thy live and shalt serve thy brother. So he's living by that sword. No one is going to make a weapon um, better than the, the so-called white man. He's expert at killing, man. This is how he's gotten everything that he has by the sword, by the weapon. You have to always keep that in mind. And see, that's why you're seeing a little so-called white lady there. She's talking about how, you know, you know, I don't like what some of some 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 people did. You no, know, your, your people ran throughout the earth with the sword, slaughtering every goddamn body, all in the name of white Jesus in a lot of um, cases. Right. It says, and by thy sword shalt thy live. And shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So that has happened before, but there's coming oh, in a new kingdom. It's going to be all about Jacob, man, because Esau he's living his kingdom right now. The so-called white man he writes the laws. He's the one that's in control of, of air airways and and boat ways. This man, you you can't you, this motherfucker running the oceans, man. He's running the skies. You can't just, he, you know, he can fly where the fuck he want to fly. You're not flying nowhere unless he's giving you permission. He got naval vessels and fucking submarines out in the oceans. You take your ass out there and try and do something like that, they're going to blow your ass to pieces. So we know who's running the planet, man. That's why you get Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. 
He covered the faces of the judges thereof, if not wearing, who is he? The earth. He runs the earth. He runs the earth with the sword. So when you put the connections together, we know who Esau is. The red man. Matter of fact, like I said again, too, let me go back because I didn't get that point where they called him, you know, um, Edom. He has a secondary name. Let me see. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. See, this is where the food is not done. Just wait on the fucking food to get done. You know? And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And you read it in the NLT over here. It says, Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. So let's go back to the video and I'm going to end out. I'm not going to keep it much longer. We already like 30 minutes in. But as you can see, none of these people are white. They're pinkish to reddish in color, man. And this is Esau Edom. This is the race of the Edomites. I'm just going to completely stay away from that. Sure, I'm not proud of like what my culture has done. But at the same time, like I would not want to be anything else. If I had to choose another. See? She, hey, she's proud to be a damn Edomite, but but. When it comes, see, she doesn't actually understand what's to come to her race as a people, because this is what's about to happen to them. Let me, um, she doesn't understand. She, if she knew what was really going to happen to her, she wouldn't want to be an Edomite. It's not going to be a pretty look for him, man. This is Revelation chapter, uh, let me see here. 13 and verse 9. Let me start there. If any man have an ear, let him hear. See? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Then we just read that his blessing was the sword. He's the one that's been out here doing all the damn killing. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. And that's what we're patiently and faithfully waiting on. And this is going to happen. This is the last book of the scriptures, man. This is Revelation. This is a revealing of what's to come. Somebody going into slavery. Who the, who's the one that's been, you know, took, took, took a people into captivity. And they get to talking about, you know, oh, well, everybody that been in captivity, everybody. That, but let's get this, though. We can get around that with this. Um, let's get in going to the Apocrypha. <clears throat> we can end out here. Y'all right. Let's get second address. Um. Let me start at verse 8. Second Edges 6 and 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau was born of him, Jacob's hand held first to, eat, to the heel of Esau. Remember, they were struggling in the womb. Right? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So this world of Esau's right now is about to end. Then there's going to come the kingdom of when the Lord Yahweh, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, comes back, there he's gonna be ruling with the children of Israel, the heirs, man. And it's not gonna be a pretty look for Esau, man, because the Lord said to give him double of what he put out. So if she actually knew what was really coming to her race as a people, she won't want to be an Edomite. Trust me. Trust me. And, and, and <laughs> hey, it's not a good look, man, for the Edomites, man. I'm just gonna put it plain and simple. But anyway, I'm going to end out there. You know, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Um, hey, not going to be a good look. And you never even heard any of the other people. It was just pretty much the guy and this woman was, I'm sure it was a longer, longer um, conversation, so to speak. But they got, the, they got the key points. And this is all about the spirit because it shows you, you know, a lot of them are not, they're embarrassed to be um, so-called white people, man. And it's mainly because of their culture. It's mainly because of the things that they've done. They don't have anything to look back and say, hey, you know, we're, you know, they, they, they see this new generation. They can't see it. They like, well, God damn, they can't. You think any of them can sit and watch one of these? They can't sit and watch a damn um, 12 years of slave movie or, uh, you know, some of some damn roots, you know, Kuta Kente. You, you sit there and you watching that shit along with them. You're going to see them squirm. You're going to really see them get red. They feel they're going to feel very uncomfortable seeing that shit. They can't look at it like, oh, it's just a movie. No, they're going to be looking like, God damn, we was really like that. 
And those are some of the basics. You know, you get to going off into um, you know, movies like uh Mandingo and you know, some of a lot of those slave movies, man, you be looking like I, you can't they're not gonna sit and watch no shit like that. You know, they would they would have to be in the within the presence of themselves to watch something like that. If if it's just an audience of say, you know, um so-called black, so-called white, you got some Chinese, so-called Chinese, so-called Japanese, just, you know, a little sprinkle of every nation sitting there watching the same movie. You get to looking at the so-called white man, everybody gonna be looking at his ass like, God damn. And even some of those other nations will squirm too because they understand how they treat us as well. You see? But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna end out there. I don't wanna, like I said, keep the lesson long. But with that, hey, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashala.